now that we've drawn our outline on our ground floor or our upper ground floor, we're now going to use this as a trace reference to draw our lower ground floor. Why are we doing it from that direction? Because in a way, the lower ground floor defines what happens in the upper ground floor. Because this is a timber-framed house, a timber-framed floor house with bearers and joists, the subfloor walls define where the upper floor walls and floor sits. So if we go to the lower ground floor, we'll see that there's nothing there. Now we could copy-paste that information, but in this case it's not really very useful, and I don't want to just keep copying 2D information. Instead, I want to start drawing with 3D information. So we'll right click on our upper ground floor and say show as trace reference and that will bring it up, it might bring it up in a, a red color or a blue color or if we go to trace reference we can actually change that to be whatever color we want. So yours might be this R195, um, this beige color. Um, the beige color doesn't work very well when I'm tr creating videos, it doesn't show up very well and that's why I tend to use red or blue. So if you want it to be a bit more vibrant, you can do that. If you want it to be less vibrant, you can go back to trace reference settings and change it. And of course, we also have intensity, so I can make it uh, more ghosted or more pale, paler. I can make it pink. So now we have our trace reference. What do we do? We want to draw with walls. When we go to our wall tool, click on the wall, that brings that up in the info box. Remember, anything we click, it takes those settings up to our info box. And again, we can just scroll along. So scroll along and we can access nearly all of our settings via scrolling. Or we can go into the info box, into the default settings, and then make changes there. Now I'm going to be using the basic setting of wall at the moment. That just means that I can manually define the thickness, otherwise we could create composites or complex profiles, that's a little bit too advanced at the moment. So we're going to use the basic profile, and I'm going to get you to use asphalt or something similar, because that's probably one that you have, and I like asphalt just because it's black on the screen, it's simple, uh, but we will change that later. Now how thick is this wall that we want to represent? We're going to start with the wall of the garage area first, and that wall is a concrete block. So that concrete block we can say is 140 millimeters wide. We can get different concrete blocks, but we'll base it on this one, 140. Click. All the rest of the settings will be fine at the moment. So when we draw, what I want you to get into the habit of doing is drawing in a counterclockwise direction. Why? Because in ARCHICAD, using our coordinate system, 0, and then we go up to 90 degrees, keep going left to 180 degrees, and then down to 270 degrees, back to 360 or 0 again. So that's in a counterclockwise direction. So that's how we're supposed to draw. Now when we're drawing a wall, we might find that that's not giving us the best result based on which direction that we're drawing. So do we want to be drawing in a with our outside face? Yes, but we need to flip the reference plane. So we can click here and that means yes we're drawing with the outside face and yes in this case the reference line is on the outside which of course is the outside face. So all I'm doing is tracing from above. So I need to make sure that my pen stays black when it goes black, that means I found an end point. We can see that that line is very thick. That's got our true line thickness. If we right click, we can turn true line weight off, and that means we can zoom in as far as we want and we won't have that thick line getting in the way. The true line weight is very useful when we're doing detailing because it gives us a better understanding of what it's going to look like when it prints, but it can be a little bit problematic when we're trying to do other types of work in ARCHICAD. Again, Holding shift can be a liability if shift is going to lock us into vertical in this case because we're not trying to draw vertically. But if we get our line on the right position, we can have a snap guide on that line. Then if we hold shift, that's going to lock us into that direction. So shift is good as long, we, as, long as we understand how to use it. And when I get to the end of my line, then I will click. I can do the same thing here get to this intersection and then I click and now I will stop. 
So that's the extent of my concrete block. Now in reality, underground or in the lower ground, my concrete block here extends to this wall, but I'm going to switch for now and we'll change it back in a minute. So now I'm going to change my wall to a different type of wall thickness. I want to now make this 110. This is my brick wall and my brick wall has engaged piers, but we're not going to worry about the piers at the moment. And we'll do the same thing. Again, we want to draw in a counterclockwise direction. So I'm going to continue from that same point. And I'm going to go around the rest of the building. Click. 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 Waiting till I get that end point. Waiting till my pencil turns black. And I'll finish that off. But in this case, I don't want to run the whole way through. I'm just going to go to here roughly. And roughly is fine, it doesn't need to be perfect. So we see that these two walls are nowhere near joining. We can intersect these, so we can select the two of them, holding shift, or we can do a box selection, which means we use the arrow selection tool to draw a box over those two walls. And then once they're both selected, we can click on the intersect tool, and that will make them join. So we've extended both walls to exactly the right distance based on their intersection point. Now that's mostly right. We still need to add some extra walls around the outside of here, which is for the base of our veranda. So again, I'll go back to drawing in my counterclockwise direction and I picked up the setting, Alt, pick up setting of the thicker wall, the 140 wall, in order to be able to do that. Now even if we now want to change the materiality, we'll do that, so we can select all of the block walls, we can go into the wall setting, we can choose where it says asphalt, and I can choose a better type of building material in order to represent these. What are they? This is supposed to be concrete block. So if I look down through my list, there's one here called concrete block, so I can click that and press OK. And in terms of at the scale at which we're working at, 1 to 100, this is a good representation of concrete block. In reality, we're talking about a core field concrete block, but we see that some strange things happen. We've got a very awkward relationship here between the concrete block and the brick. Let's, before we worry about that too much, let's select all the brick. Let's group that together. I'll group all of these. I'm grouping these three walls and then these two walls separately because these aren't full height. So I've selected all of my brick walls and now I'm going to go into the settings and change from asphalt to brick. What type of brickwork? Let's just choose the generic one, brickwork. And if we zoom in, we still see that that's an awkward relationship. It's not supposed to be relating like that, but it doesn't know what we're trying to do. Now if we go into the material settings of this, we can have a better understanding of why this is happening. It's really to do with priority and intersection, uh, but it can be a little bit difficult to convince Archicad of what we're trying to do. One way around this, because the reality is we'd never have a brick wall and a block wall joining like this anyway, one reality around this is to select our brick wall and to draw in the pier of how this should work. So I'm going to draw this in at 230 back this way again for 350 and let's go down and finish that off at 230 and let's do the same thing here picking up my block, and this time I'll draw this as 390. Alt, Control Alt. So now we see, because it's created better intersections, more realistic intersections, it's now intersecting the way that we want it to. 
Uh, don't worry about that last part if that was a little bit too complicated. Effectively what we're trying to do is just draw the walls based on trace references from the story above. Uh, but we're trying to also represent the true thickness and materiality of what those walls are. Now, the reality is also that these are not new walls, these are existing walls. So while I've chosen a building material to represent their real materiality, in terms of documentation, we would not be representing existing walls with a hatch that shows its materiality. Instead, we'd want to show it as solid black, showing that it's existing and not changing. So I'll leave that open for you now. If you want to trace this for yourself down on the lower ground floor, we want to trace the brick walls and trace the block walls to get this result. And then we'll have a look at what we need to do next.